In statistics, a confidence interval (CI) is a type of interval estimate computed from the statistics of the observed data that might contain the true value of an unknown population parameter. The interval has an associated confidence level or coverage that, loosely speaking, quantifies the level of confidence that the deterministic parameter is captured by the interval. More strictly speaking, the confidence level represents the frequency, i.e., the proportion of possible confidence intervals that contain the true value of the unknown population parameter. In other words, if confidence intervals are constructed using a given confidence level from an infinite number of independent sample statistics, the proportion of those intervals that contain the true value of the parameter will be equal to the confidence level. Confidence intervals consist of a range of potential values of the unknown population parameter. However, the interval computed from a particular sample does not necessarily include the true value of the parameter. Based on the usually taken assumption that observed data are random samples from a true population, the confidence interval obtained from the data is also random. The confidence level is designated prior to examining the data. Most commonly, the 95% confidence level is used. However, other confidence levels can be used, for example, 90% and 99%. Factors affecting the width of the confidence interval include the size of the sample, the confidence level, and the variability in the sample. A larger sample will tend to produce a better estimate of the population parameter, when all other factors are equal. A higher confidence level will tend to produce a broader confidence interval. Confidence intervals were introduced to statistics by Jersey Neyman in a paper published in 1937. Topic. Conceptual basis Topic. Introduction Interval estimation can be contrasted with point estimation. A point estimate is a single value given as the estimate of a population parameter that is of interest, for example, the mean of some quantity. An interval estimate specifies instead a range within which the parameter is estimated to lie. Confidence intervals are commonly reported in tables or graphs along with point estimates of the same parameters, to show the reliability of the estimates. For example, a confidence interval can be used to describe how reliable survey results are. In a poll of election voting intentions, the result might be that 40% of respondents intend to vote for a certain party. A 99% confidence interval for the proportion in the whole population having the same intention on the survey might be 30% to 50%. From the same data one may calculate a 90% confidence interval, which in this case might be 37% to 43%. A major factor determining the length of a confidence interval is the size of the sample used in the estimation procedure, for example, the number of people taking part in a survey. Topic. Meaning and interpretation Various interpretations of a confidence interval can be given taking the 90% confidence interval as an example in the following. The confidence interval can be expressed in terms of samples or repeated samples. Were this procedure to be repeated on numerous samples, the fraction of calculated confidence intervals which would differ for each sample that encompass the true population parameter would tend toward 90%. The confidence interval can be expressed in terms of a single sample. There is a 90% probability that the calculated confidence interval from some future experiment encompasses the true value of the population parameter. Note this is a probability statement about the confidence interval, not the population parameter. This considers the probability associated with a confidence interval from a pre-experiment point of view, in the same context in which arguments for the random allocation of treatments to study items are made. Here the experimenter sets out the way in which they intend to calculate a confidence interval and to know, before they do the actual experiment, that the interval they will end up calculating has a particular chance of covering the true but unknown value. This is very similar to the repeated sample interpretation above, except that it avoids relying on considering hypothetical repeats of a sampling procedure that may not be repeatable in any meaningful sense. See Neyman construction. The explanation of a confidence interval can amount to something like the confidence interval represents values for the population parameter for which the difference between the parameter and the observed estimate is not statistically significant at the 10% level. 
In fact, this relates to one particular way in which a confidence interval may be constructed. In each of the above, the following applies if the true value of the parameter lies outside the 90% confidence interval, then a sampling event has occurred, namely, obtaining a point estimate of the parameter at least this far from the true parameter value, which had a probability of 10% or less of happening by chance. Topic. Misunderstandings Confidence intervals and levels are frequently misunderstood, and published studies have shown that even professional scientists often misinterpret them. A 95% confidence level does not mean that for a given realized interval there is a 95% probability that the population parameter lies within the interval i.e., a 95% probability that the interval covers the population parameter. According to the strict frequentist interpretation, once an interval is calculated, this interval either covers the parameter value or it does not, it is no longer a matter of probability. The 95% probability relates to the reliability of the estimation procedure, not to a specific calculated interval. Neyman himself, the original proponent of confidence intervals, made this point in his original paper. It will be noticed that in the above description, the probability statements refer to the problems of estimation with which the statistician will be concerned in the future. In fact, I have repeatedly stated that the frequency of correct results will tend to alpha. Consider now the case when a sample is already drawn, and the calculations have given particular limits. Can we say that in this particular case the probability of the true value falling between these limits is equal to alpha? The answer is obviously in the negative. The parameter is an unknown constant, and no probability statement concerning its value may be made. Deborah Mayo expands on this further as follows. It must be stressed, however, that having seen the value of the data, Neyman Pearson theory never permits one to conclude that the specific confidence interval formed covers the true value of zero with either 1 minus alpha, 100% probability or 1 minus alpha, 100% degree of confidence. Seidenfeld's remark seems rooted in a not uncommon desire for Neyman Pearson confidence intervals to provide something which they cannot legitimately provide, namely, a measure of the degree of probability, belief, or support that an unknown parameter value lies in a specific interval. Following Savage 1962, the probability that a parameter lies in a specific interval may be referred to as a measure of final precision. While a measure of final precision may seem desirable, and while confidence levels are often wrongly interpreted as providing such a measure, no such interpretation is warranted. Admittedly, such a misinterpretation is encouraged by the word confidence. A 95% confidence level does not mean that 95% of the sample data lie within the confidence interval. A confidence interval is not a definitive range of plausible values for the sample parameter, though it may be understood as an estimate of plausible values for the population parameter. A particular confidence level of 95% calculated from an experiment does not mean that there is a 95% probability of a sample parameter from a repeat of the experiment falling within this interval. Topic. Philosophical issues. The principle behind confidence intervals was formulated to provide an answer to the question raised in statistical inference of how to deal with the uncertainty inherent in results derived from data that are themselves only a randomly selected subset of a population. There are other answers, notably that provided by Bayesian inference in the form of credible intervals. Confidence intervals correspond to a chosen rule for determining the confidence bounds, where this rule is essentially determined before any data are obtained, or before an experiment is done. The rule is defined such that over all possible datasets that might be obtained, there is a high probability high is specifically quantified that the interval determined by the rule will include the true value of the quantity under consideration. The Bayesian approach appears to offer intervals that can, subject to acceptance of an interpretation of probability, as Bayesian probability, be interpreted as meaning that the specific interval calculated from a given dataset has a particular probability of including the true value, conditional on the data and other information available. The confidence interval approach does not allow this since in this formulation and at this same stage, both the bounds of the interval and the true values are fixed values, and there is no randomness involved. On the other hand, the Bayesian approach is only as valid as the prior probability used in the computation, whereas the confidence interval does not depend on assumptions about the prior probability. 
the questions concerning how an interval expressing uncertainty in an estimate might be formulated, and of how such intervals might be interpreted, are not strictly mathematical problems and are philosophically problematic. Mathematics can take over once the basic principles of an approach to inference have been established, but it has only a limited role in saying why one approach should be preferred to another. For example, a confidence level of 95% is often used in the biological sciences, but this is a matter of convention or arbitration. In the physical sciences, a much higher level may be used. Topic: Relationship with other statistical topics. Topic. Statistical hypothesis testing Confidence intervals are closely related to statistical significance testing. For example, if for some estimated parameter θ one wants to test the null hypothesis that θ equals zero against the alternative that θ does not equal zero, then this test can be performed by determining whether the confidence interval for θ contains zero. More generally, given the availability of a hypothesis testing procedure that can test the null hypothesis θ. Topic: θ0 against the alternative that θ does not equal θ0 for any value of θ0, then a confidence interval with confidence level gamma. 1 minus alpha can be defined as containing any number θ0 for which the corresponding null hypothesis is not rejected at significance level alpha. If the estimates of two parameters, for example, the mean values of a variable in two independent groups have confidence intervals that do not overlap, then the difference between the two values is more significant than that indicated by the individual values of alpha. So, this test is too conservative and can lead to a result that is more significant than the individual values of alpha would indicate. If two confidence intervals overlap, the two means still may be significantly different. Accordingly, and consistent with the mantel heinzel chi squared test, is a proposed fix whereby one reduces the error bounds for the two means by multiplying them by the square root of one half 0 0.707107 before making the comparison. While the formulations of the notions of confidence intervals and of statistical hypothesis testing are distinct, they are in some senses related and to some extent complementary. While not all confidence intervals are constructed in this way, one general purpose approach to constructing confidence intervals is to define a 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval to consist of all those values θ0 for which a test of the hypothesis θ equals θ0 is not rejected at a significance level of 100 alpha percent. Such an approach may not always be available since it presupposes the practical availability of an appropriate significance test. Naturally, any assumptions required for the significance test would carry over to the confidence intervals. It may be convenient to make the general correspondence that parameter values within a confidence interval are equivalent to those values that would not be rejected by a hypothesis test, but this would be dangerous. In many instances the confidence intervals that are quoted are only approximately valid, perhaps derived from plus or minus twice the standard error. And the implications of this for the supposedly corresponding hypothesis tests are usually unknown. It is worth noting that the confidence interval for a parameter is not the same as the acceptance region of a test for this parameter, as is sometimes thought. The confidence interval is part of the parameter space, whereas the acceptance region is part of the sample space. For the same reason, the confidence level is not the same as the complementary probability of the level of significance. Topic. Confidence region. Confidence regions generalize the confidence interval concept to deal with multiple quantities. Such regions can indicate not only the extent of likely sampling errors but can also reveal whether for example, it is the case that if the estimate for one quantity is unreliable, then the other is also likely to be unreliable. Topic. Confidence band A confidence band is used in statistical analysis to represent the uncertainty in an estimate of a curve or function based on limited or noisy data. Similarly, a prediction band is used to represent the uncertainty about the value of a new data point on the curve, but subject to noise. Confidence and prediction bands are often used as part of the graphical presentation of results of a regression analysis. Confidence bands are closely related to confidence intervals, which represent the uncertainty in an estimate of a single numerical value. 
as confidence intervals, by construction, only refer to a single point, they are narrower, at this point, than a confidence band which is supposed to hold simultaneously at many points. Topic. Basic steps This example assumes that the samples are drawn from a normal distribution. The basic procedure for calculating a confidence interval for a population mean is as follows. 1. Identify the sample mean x display style bar x point 2. Identify whether the population standard deviation is known sigma display style sigma or is unknown and is estimated by the sample standard deviation s display style s. If the population standard deviation is known then z equals phi minus 1 1 minus alpha 2 equals minus phi minus 1 alpha 2 Display style z caret asterisk equals phi caret minus one left one frac alpha two right equals phi caret minus one left frac alpha two right where c equals one hundred one minus alpha percent display style c equals one hundred one alpha percent is the confidence level and phi Display style phi is the CDF of the standard normal distribution used as the critical value. This value is only dependent on the confidence level for the test. Typical two-sided confidence levels are: if the population standard deviation is unknown, then the student's t distribution is used as the critical value. This value is dependent on the confidence level c for the test and degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom are found by subtracting one from the number of observations n minus one. The critical value is found from the t distribution table. In this table, the critical value is written as t equals t alpha r. Display style t caret asterisk equals t underscore alpha r, where r display style r is the degrees of freedom and alpha equals one minus C two display style alpha equals one C over two point three. Plug the found values into the appropriate equations for a known standard deviation x minus z sigma n x plus z sigma n Display style left bar x z caret asterisk sigma over sqrt end bar x plus z caret asterisk sigma over sqrt end right for an unknown standard deviation x minus t s n x plus t s n display style left bar x t caret asterisk s over sqrt n bar x plus t caret asterisk s over sqrt n right. Topic: Statistical theory. Topic definition: Let x be a random sample from a probability distribution with statistical parameters theta, which is a quantity to be estimated, and phi, representing quantities that are not of immediate interest. A confidence interval for the parameter theta, with confidence level or confidence coefficient gamma, is an interval with random endpoints u x v x determined by the pair of random variables u x and v x, with the property p r theta phi u x theta v x equals gamma for all theta phi. Display style p r underscore theta var phi u x. The quantities phi in which there is no immediate interest are called nuisance parameters, as statistical theory still needs to find some way to deal with them. The number gamma, with typical values close to but not greater than 1, is sometimes given in the form 1 minus alpha, or as a percentage 100%, 1 minus alpha, where alpha is a small non-negative number, close to zero. 
Here pr theta phi indicates the probability distribution of x characterized by theta phi. An important part of this specification is that the random interval u x v x covers the unknown value theta with a high probability, no matter what the true value of theta actually is. Note that here pr theta phi need not refer to an explicitly given parameterized family of distributions, although it often does. Just as the random variable x notionally corresponds to other possible realizations of x from the same population or from the same version of reality, the parameters theta, phi, indicate that we need to consider other versions of reality in which the distribution of x might have different characteristics. In a specific situation, when x is the outcome of the sample x, the interval u, x, v, x is also referred to as a confidence interval for theta. Note that it is no longer possible to say that the observed interval u, x, v, x has probability gamma to contain the parameter theta. This observed interval is just one realization of all possible intervals for which the probability statement holds. Topic approximate confidence intervals In many applications, confidence intervals that have exactly the required confidence level are hard to construct. But practically useful intervals can still be found. The rule for constructing the interval may be accepted as providing a confidence interval at level gamma if pr theta phi u x theta v x approximately equals gamma for all theta phi display style pr underscore theta var phi u x to an acceptable level of approximation. Alternatively, some authors simply require that pr theta phi u x theta v x gamma for all theta phi display style pr underscore theta var phi u x, which is useful if the probabilities are only partially identified or imprecise. Topic: Desirable properties. When applying standard statistical procedures, there will often be standard ways of constructing confidence intervals. These will have been devised so as to meet certain desirable properties, which will hold given that the assumptions on which the procedure rely are true. These desirable properties may be described as, validity, optimality, and invariance. Of these, validity is most important, followed closely by, optimality, invariance may be considered as a property of the method of derivation of a confidence interval rather than of the rule for constructing the interval. In non-standard applications, the same desirable properties would be sought. Validity. This means that the nominal coverage probability confidence level of the confidence interval should hold, either exactly or to a good approximation. Optimality. This means that the rule for constructing the confidence interval should make as much use of the information in the data set as possible. Recall that one could throw away half of a dataset and still be able to derive a valid confidence interval. One way of assessing optimality is by the length of the interval so that a rule for constructing a confidence interval is judged better than another if it leads to intervals whose lengths are typically shorter. Invariance. In many applications, the quantity being estimated might not be tightly defined as such. For example, a survey might result in an estimate of the median income in a population, but it might equally be considered as providing an estimate of the logarithm of the median income, given that this is a common scale for presenting graphical results. It would be desirable that the method used for constructing a confidence interval for the median income would give equivalent results when applied to constructing a confidence interval for the logarithm of the median income, specifically the values at the ends of the latter interval would be the logarithms of the values at the ends of former interval. Topic. Methods of derivation For non-standard applications, there are several routes that might be taken to derive a rule for the construction of confidence intervals. Established rules for standard procedures might be justified or explained via several of these routes. Typically a rule for constructing confidence intervals is closely tied to a particular way of finding a point estimate of the quantity being considered. Summary statistics this is closely related to the method of moments for estimation. A simple example arises where the quantity to be estimated is the mean, in which case a natural estimate is the sample mean. The usual arguments indicate that the sample variance can be used to estimate the variance of the sample mean. A confidence interval for the true mean can be constructed centered on the sample mean with a width which is a multiple of the square root of the sample variance. Likelihood theory where estimates are constructed using the maximum likelihood principle, the theory for this provides two ways of constructing confidence intervals or confidence regions for the estimates. One way is by using Wilkes's theorem to find all the possible values of theta 
display style theta that fulfill the following restriction lane l theta lane l theta caret minus 1 2 chi 1 1 minus alpha 2 Display style lane L theta GEQ lane L hat theta frac one two she underscore one one alpha carrot two estimating equations. The estimation approach here can be considered as both a generalization of the method of moments and a generalization of the maximum likelihood approach. There are corresponding generalizations of the results of maximum likelihood theory that allow confidence intervals to be constructed based on estimates derived from estimating equations. Hypothesis testing If significance tests are available for general values of a parameter, then confidence intervals regions can be constructed by including in the 100p% confidence region all those points for which the significance test of the null hypothesis that the true value is the given value is not rejected at a significance level of 1 minus p. Bootstrapping in situations where the distributional assumptions for that above methods are uncertain or violated, resampling methods allow construction of confidence intervals or prediction intervals. The observed data distribution and the internal correlations are used as the surrogate for the correlations in the wider population. Topic. Examples Topic. Practical example A machine fills cups with a liquid, and is supposed to be adjusted so that the content of the cups is 250 grams of liquid. As the machine cannot fill every cup with exactly 250.0 grams, the content added to individual cups shows some variation, and is considered a random variable x. This variation is assumed to be normally distributed around the desired average of 250 grams, with a standard deviation sigma, of 2.5 grams. To determine if the machine is adequately calibrated, a sample of n equals 25 cups of liquid is chosen at random and the cups are weighed. The resulting measured masses of liquid are x1, x25, a random sample from x. To get an impression of the expectation mu, it is sufficient to give an estimate. The appropriate estimator is the sample mean mu caret equals x equals 1 n i equals 1 n x i display style hat mu equals bar x equals frac 1 n sum underscore i equals 1 caret n x underscore i the sample shows actual weights x1, x25 with mean x equals 1, 25, i equals 1, 25, x i equals 250.2 grams. Display style bar x equals frac 125 sum underscore i equals 1 carrot 25 x underscore i equals 250.2 text grams. If we take another sample of 25 cups, we could easily expect to find mean values like 250.4 or 251.1 grams. A sample mean value of 280 grams, however, would be extremely rare if the mean content of the cups is in fact close to 250 grams. There is a whole interval around the observed value 250.2 grams of the sample mean within which, if the whole population mean actually takes a value in this range, the observed data would not be considered particularly unusual. Such an interval is called a confidence interval for the parameter mu. How do we calculate such an interval? The endpoints of the interval have to be calculated from the sample, so they are statistics, functions of the sample x1, x25 and hence random variables themselves. In our case we may determine the endpoints by considering that the sample mean x from a normally distributed sample is also normally distributed, with the same expectation mu, but with a standard error of sigma n equals 2.5 g 25 equals 0.5 grams 
display style frac sigma sqrt n equals frac 2.5 text g sqrt 25 equals 0.5 text grams. By standardizing, we get a random variable z equals x minus mu sigma n equals x minus mu zero five display style z equals frac bar x mu sigma sqrt n equals frac bar x mu zero point five dependent on the parameter mu to be estimated but with a standard normal distribution independent of the parameter mu hence it is possible to find numbers minus z and z independent of mu between which z lies with probability 1 minus alpha a measure of how confident we want to be we take 1 minus alpha equals 0 0.95 for example so we have p minus z z z equals 1 minus alpha equals 0 0.95 display style p z l e q z l e q z equals 1 alpha equals 0 0.95 the number z follows from the cumulative distribution function, in this case the cumulative normal distribution function. Phi z equals p z z equals 1 minus alpha 2 equals 0 0.975 z equals phi minus 1 phi z equals phi minus 1 0 0.975 equals 1 96 display style begin aligned phi z and equals p z l e q z equals 1 t f r a c alpha 2 equals 0 0.975 6 p t z and equals phi caret minus 1 phi z equals phi caret minus 1 0 0.975 equals 1.96 end aligned and we get 0 0.95 equals 1 minus alpha equals p minus z z z equals p minus 1.96 x minus mu sigma n 1.96 equals p x minus Minus one. Ninety six sigma n mu x plus one point nine six sigma n. Display style begin aligned zero point nine five and equals one alpha equals p z l e q z l e q z equals p left minus one point nine six l e q frac bar x mu sigma s q r t n l e q one point nine six right six p t and equals p left bar x minus one point nine six frac sigma s q r t n l e q mu l e q bar x plus one point nine six frac sigma s q r t n right end aligned. In other words, the lower endpoint of the 95% confidence interval is lower endpoint equals x minus 1.96 sigma n display style text lower endpoint equals bar x minus 1.96 frac sigma sqrt n and the upper endpoint of the 95% confidence interval is upper endpoint equals x plus 1.96 sigma n display style text upper endpoint equals bar x plus 1.96 frac sigma sqrt n with the values in this example, the confidence interval is 0 0.95 equals PR x minus 1.96 times 0 0.5 mu x plus 1.96 times 0 0.5 equals PR x minus 0 0.98 mu x plus 0 0.98. Display style begin aligned 0 0.95 and equals PR bar x minus 1.96 times 0 0.5 leq mu leq bar x plus 1.96 times 0 0.5 6 pt and equals PR bar x minus 0 0.98 leq mu leq bar x plus 0 0.98 end aligned as the standard deviation of the population sigma is known in this case the distribution of the sample mean x display style bar x is a normal distribution with mu display style mu the only unknown parameter in the theoretical example below the parameter sigma is also unknown which calls for using the student's t distribution Topic. Interpretation This might be interpreted as, with probability 0.95 we will find a confidence interval in which the value of parameter mu will be between the stochastic endpoints x minus 
zero ninety eight display style bar x minus zero ninety eight and x plus zero point nine eight display style bar x plus zero point nine eight this does not mean there is 0.95 probability that the value of parameter mu is in the interval obtained by using the currently computed value of the sample mean x minus 0.98 x plus 0.98 display style bar x minus 0.98 bar x plus 0.98 Instead, every time the measurements are repeated, there will be another value for the mean x of the sample. In 95% of the cases mu will be between the endpoints calculated from this mean, but in 5% of the cases it will not be. The actual confidence interval is calculated by entering the measured masses in the formula. A 0.95 confidence interval becomes x minus 0.98 x plus 0.98 equals 250.2 minus 0.98 250.2 plus 0.98 equals 249.22 251.18 display style bar x minus 0.98 bar x plus 0.98 equals 250.2 to 0.98 250.2 plus 0 98 equals 249.22 251.18 in other words the 95% confidence interval is between the lower endpoint 249.22 grams and the upper endpoint 251.18 grams as the desired value 250 of mu is within the resulted confidence interval, there is no reason to believe the machine is wrongly calibrated. The calculated interval has fixed endpoints, where mu might be in between, or not. Thus this event has probability either 0 or 1. One cannot say, with probability 1 minus alpha, the parameter mu lies in the confidence interval. One only knows that by repetition in 100 1 minus alpha percent of the cases, mu will be in the calculated interval. In 100 alpha percent of the cases however it does not. And unfortunately one does not know in which of the cases this happens. That is, instead of using the term, probability, why one can say, with confidence level 100 1 minus alpha percent, mu lies in the confidence interval. The maximum error is calculated to be 0.98 since it is the difference between the value that we are confident of with upper or lower endpoint. The figure on the right shows 50 realizations of a confidence interval for a given population mean mu. If we randomly choose one realization, the probability is 95% we end up having chosen an interval that contains the parameter, however, we may be unlucky and have picked the wrong one. We will never know, we are stuck with our interval. Topic. Theoretical example Suppose x1 xn is an independent sample from a normally distributed population with unknown parameters mean mu and variance sigma 2. Let x equals x1 plus plus x n n display style bar x equals x underscore 1 plus c dots plus x underscore n n S two equals one N minus one I equals one N X I minus X two Display style s carrot two equals frac one n one sum underscore I equals one carrot N X underscore I bar X carrot two where x is the sample mean and s2 is the sample variance then t equals x minus mu s n display style t equals frac bar x mu s sqrt n has a student's t distribution with n minus 1 degree of freedom 
Note that the distribution of T does not depend on the values of the unobservable parameters mu and sigma 2, i.e., it is a pivotal quantity. Suppose we wanted to calculate a 95% confidence interval for mu. Then, denoting C as the 97.5 th percentile of this distribution. PR minus C T C equals 0 0.95 Display style PR C LEQT LEQC equals 0 0.95. Note that 97.5 th and 0 0.95 are correct in the preceding expressions. There is a 2.5% chance that T display style T will be less than minus display style C display style C and a 2.5% chance that it will be larger than plus display style plus c display style c thus the probability that t display style t will be between minus display style c display style c and plus display style plus C display style C is 95%. Consequently, PR X minus C S N mu X plus C S N equals 0.95. Display style PR left bar x frac CS SQRT and LEQ mu LEQ bar x plus frac CS SQRT and right equals 0 0.95 and we have a theoretical stochastic 95% confidence interval for mu. After observing the sample, we find values x for x and s for s, from which we compute the confidence interval x minus C S n x plus c s n display style left bar x frac c s s q r t n bar x plus frac c s s q r t n right an interval with fixed numbers as endpoints of which we can no longer say there is a certain probability it contains the parameter mu either mu is in this interval or isn't Topic. Alternatives and critiques Confidence intervals are one method of interval estimation, and the most widely used in frequentist statistics. An analogous concept in Bayesian statistics is credible intervals, while an alternative frequentist method is that of prediction intervals which, rather than estimating parameters, estimate the outcome of future samples. For other approaches to expressing uncertainty using intervals, see interval estimation. Topic comparison to prediction intervals A prediction interval for a random variable is defined similarly to a confidence interval for a statistical parameter. Consider an additional random variable y which may or may not be statistically dependent on the random sample x then u x v x provides a prediction interval for the as yet to be observed value y of y if pr theta phi u x y v x equals gamma for all theta phi. Display style PR underscore theta, var phi, U X, here PR theta, phi indicates the joint probability distribution of the random variables X, Y, where this distribution depends on the statistical parameters theta, phi. Topic. Comparison to tolerance intervals Topic Comparison to Bayesian interval estimates A Bayesian interval estimate is called a credible interval. Using much of the same notation as above, the definition of a credible interval for the unknown true value of theta is, for a given gamma, PR U X theta V X X equals X equals gamma, display style PR U X, here theta is used to emphasize that the unknown value of theta is being treated as a random variable. The definitions of the two types of intervals may be compared as follows. The definition of a confidence interval involves probabilities calculated from the distribution of x for a given theta, phi, or conditional on these values and the condition needs to hold for all values of theta, phi. 
The definition of a credible interval involves probabilities calculated from the distribution of theta conditional on the observed values of x equals x and marginalized or averaged over the values of phi, where this last quantity is a random variable corresponding to the uncertainty about the nuisance parameters in phi. Note that the treatment of the nuisance parameters above is often omitted from discussions comparing confidence and credible intervals, but it is markedly different between the two cases. In some simple standard cases, the intervals produced as confidence and credible intervals from the same data set can be identical. They are very different if informative prior information is included in the Bayesian analysis, and may be very different for some parts of the space of possible data even if the Bayesian prior is relatively uninformative. There is disagreement about which of these methods produces the most useful results. The mathematics of the computations are rarely in question confidence intervals being based on sampling distributions, credible intervals being based on Bayes' theorem, but the application of these methods, the utility and interpretation of the produced statistics, is debated. Topic. Confidence intervals for proportions and related quantities An approximate confidence interval for a population mean can be constructed for random variables that are not normally distributed in the population, relying on the central limit theorem, if the sample sizes and counts are big enough. The formulae are identical to the case above where the sample mean is actually normally distributed about the population mean. The approximation will be quite good with only a few dozen observations in the sample if the probability distribution of the random variable is not too different from the normal distribution e.g. its cumulative distribution function does not have any discontinuities and its skewness is moderate. One type of sample mean is the mean of an indicator variable, which takes on the value 1 for true and the value 0 for false. The mean of such a variable is equal to the proportion that has the variable equal to 1 both in the population and in any sample. This is a useful property of indicator variables, especially for hypothesis testing. To apply the central limit theorem, one must use a large enough sample. A rough rule of thumb is that one should see at least five cases in which the indicator is 1 and at least five in which it is 0. Confidence intervals constructed using the above formulae may include negative numbers or numbers greater than 1, but proportions obviously cannot be negative or exceed 1. Additionally, sample proportions can only take on a finite number of values, so the central limit theorem and the normal distribution are not the best tools for building a confidence interval. C. Binomial proportion confidence interval. For better methods which are specific to this case. Topic: <laughs> Counterexamples. Since confidence interval theory was proposed, a number of counter-examples to the theory have been developed to show how the interpretation of confidence intervals can be problematic, at least if one interprets them naively. Topic. Confidence procedure for uniform location Welch presented an example which clearly shows the difference between the theory of confidence intervals and other theories of interval estimation including Fisher's fiducial intervals and objective Bayesian intervals. Robinson called this example p possibly the best known counterexample for Neyman's version of confidence interval theory. To Welch, it showed the superiority of confidence interval theory, to critics of the theory, it shows a deficiency. Here we present a simplified version. Suppose that x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 are independent observations from a uniform theta minus 1 half theta plus 1 half distribution then the optimal 50% confidence procedure is x plus or minus x1 minus x2 2 if x1 minus x2 1 half 1 minus x1 minus x2 2 if x1 minus x2 1 half Display style bar x pm begin cases d frac x underscore one x underscore two two and text if x underscore one x underscore two a fiducial or objective Bayesian argument can be used to derive the interval estimate x plus or minus one minus x one minus x two four display style bar x pm frac one x underscore one x underscore two four which is also a fifty percent confidence procedure. Welch showed that the first confidence procedure dominates the second, according to Desiderata from confidence interval theory, for every theta 1 does not equal theta display style theta underscore 1 NEQ theta the probability that the first procedure contains 
theta one display style theta underscore one is less than or equal to the probability that the second procedure contains theta one display style theta underscore one the average width of the intervals from the first procedure is less than that of the second hence the first procedure is preferred under classical confidence interval theory however when x one minus x two one two display style x underscore one x underscore two g e q one half intervals from the first procedure are guaranteed to contain the true value theta display style theta Therefore, the nominal 50% confidence coefficient is unrelated to the uncertainty we should have that a specific interval contains the true value. The second procedure does not have this property. Moreover, when the first procedure generates a very short interval, this indicates that x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 are very close together and hence only offer the information in a single data point. Yet the first interval will exclude almost all reasonable values of the parameter due to its short width. The second procedure does not have this property. The two counterintuitive properties of the first procedure 100% coverage when x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 are far apart and almost 0% coverage when x 1 x 2 display style x underscore 1 x underscore 2 are close together balance out to yield 50% coverage on average however despite the first procedure being optimal its intervals offer neither an assessment of the precision of the estimate nor an assessment of the uncertainty one should have that the interval contains the true value this counter example is used to argue against naive interpretations of confidence intervals if a confidence procedure is asserted to have properties beyond that of the nominal coverage, such as relation to precision, or a relationship with Bayesian inference, those properties must be proved, they do not follow from the fact that a procedure is a confidence procedure. Topic. Confidence procedure for omega-2 Steiger suggested a number of confidence procedures for common effect size measures in ANOVA. Maury et al. point out that several of these confidence procedures, including the one for omega-2, have the property that as the F statistic becomes increasingly small, indicating misfit with all possible values of omega-2, the confidence interval shrinks and can even contain only the single value omega-2 equals zero, that is, the CI is infinitesimally narrow, this occurs when p 1 minus alpha 2 Display style p g e q one alpha two for a one hundred one minus alpha percent display style one hundred one alpha percent c i. This behavior is consistent with the relationship between the confidence procedure and significance testing, as f becomes so small that the group means are much closer together than we would expect by chance. A significance test might indicate rejection for most or all values of omega 2, hence the interval will be very narrow or even empty, or, by a convention suggested by Steiger, containing only zero. However, this does not indicate that the estimate of omega 2 is very precise. In a sense, it indicates the opposite, that the trustworthiness of the results themselves may be in doubt. This is contrary to the common interpretation of confidence intervals that they reveal the precision of the estimate. Topic. See also Cumulative distribution function based nonparametric confidence interval CL's upper limits particle physics Confidence distribution Credence statistics Error bar Estimation statistics P-value Robust confidence intervals Confidence region Credible interval Topic. Confidence interval for specific distributions Confidence interval for binomial distribution 
Confidence interval for exponent of the power law distribution Confidence interval for mean of the exponential distribution Confidence interval for mean of the Poisson distribution Confidence intervals for mean and variance of the normal distribution